Jeremy Rifkin likes to say this is the greatest accomplishment of humankind. We've changed the composition of a planet's atmosphere. Now that's serious stuff. It's not a myth. It's not a matter of belief. And that's what I want to make very clear. I consider belief as a matter of faith, like religious faith. One believes the tenets of one's religion. Science is not based on belief, it's based on evidence. So the evidence is so strong, and I consider it logically or rationally, and the conclusions that you can draw from that evidence are very clear. I recognize the significance of the evidence. It's not a matter of belief. If the changes accelerate the way that we think they are, it means there are many uh, impacts on the world that are going to occur, which could be very, very serious. Water shortages in some parts of the world, water wars, well, oil wars, which we already have, in effect. Um, this can all get very, very, very serious. And as soon as you start talking about things that affect people's lives, like wars or e economics and things like this, you immediately get into people dividing into political camps and how you, they think you deal with these things, or do you have philosophical differences between people, creationists or, or, or other people, and you, you basically end up having culture wars. And I feel like not the science questions of climate change, but the discussion of those questions of climate change are one big culture war right now, and it's unfortunate. So what the contrarians and the skeptics are trying to do, they're not concerned with the facts or the measurements, the actuality or the reality of it. They're not concerned what make, what make sense and what's logical or rational at all. All they're trying to do is cast doubt in the minds of the jurors, the general public, by any means necessary. And they've resorted to disinformation, doubt, outright lying, misrepresentation, and uh, all kinds of political techniques. And, and as you know, in political campaigns, and this has become a political, politicized issue, um, anything goes, you know, anything that you can get away with goes. And so uh, that's what's happened to the general public. They've been, become confused. And of course, the press doesn't help by acting like it's a genuine controversy. I mean, scientists who know about the subject, it's not controversial unless they're paid by one of the oil companies, for example. It's not controversial among uh, objective and sincere scientists. It, it, the, as I explained with those measurements, it's all right there. Uh, any fool can see that uh, we're producing more CO2, it absorbs heat, and it's getting warmer, the ice is melting. Uh, that's not hard to understand. Neither is the solution, reducing the greenhouse gas emissions. That's not hard to understand. What's difficult is how we do it. The longer we wait, and this is the dire warning, from an economic and political standpoint, from the longer we wait, the more it's going to cost in the long run. Some of the opponents say, well, a going, converting to clean energy is going to be too costly to the economy. No, it isn't. Change produces opportunity. I mean, it's looking at the glass half empty to say that. But the longer we put it off, it's not going to save money. It's going to cost far, far more in the long run by putting it off. So the economic issue that's presented is, uh, shall we say, really uh, not very profound.